Oh, this next guest always brings a smile to my face. He is the voice of rock, and he brings that voice and that bombastic bass tone to the new Dead Daisies album out <laughs> January 22nd. It's called Holy Ground. Mr. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Glenn Hughes. Hello, sir. Oh, man. Good day, Don. How are you? I'm fantastic. Just seeing your your face uh, makes me smile. And uh, <laughs> congrats on really great new music. Um, man, I'm just I'm really digging in on this new album. Thank you. You know they say they say you know America we need unity now in 2021, right? That's what they're saying. But I don't hear anybody with a solid plan, Glenn. So what I say is everybody goes out and picks up the new Dead Daisies album, <laughs> and then we're all yes. united in rock. Yeah. Why not? Why not? It's 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 upon us. It's coming out in the next 48 hours, the fifth 72 hours, and we're all very excited to present this to everyone. That's right, and and that's I to me that's a solid plan for unity right there. Is that we all get united in rock and man, I just the, the new the new album is is just incredible. Um, such a, obviously a big change uh, for you coming in replacing John sure. Karabi and Marco Mendoza. Um, you know you've seen situations before where you've had all top notch musicians, but that doesn't necessarily make a band. Was this sort of uh was was this sort of an instant match made in heaven for you guys or did it take a little while to gel you know me well enough don i think it, for me it's about the songs i think for anyone that is bringing out a new piece of work how good are your songs do are you prepared to to record them do you have what it takes hopefully we we went in the studio i brought all this material with me and and we just got lucky, I guess. We worked very, very hard in, in France uh, last November, December. I mean, the year before. Yeah. <laughs> got to go back to, to 019. Uh, you and I have been known about this record a long time. Yes. And, and now it's a, it's upon us, you know. It's it's like living and breathing and, and, and staring at us. So we're so happy to bring it out. Was there was there any something in the, the water and the wine in the south of France that... Uh, added to the stew of, of the new Dead Daisies music? What was there was brotherhood and camaraderie. I'm an only child, and when I join any new group of musicians, whether it's my own band or any band I'm in, there hasn't been that many, actually. Uh, it's about having uh, a great bond with, with, my fellow, with my fellow bandmates. And, and to live together at La Fabrique, which is the place we recorded at in saint Rémy, in the south of France, was, was epic because we lived together, we had breakfast together, we told jokes together, we made some rock and roll together. And that, that's the, the ingredient for me, all the magic was in the brotherhood. Right. So, but that's what I mean. Like the setting actually does play a part in, in recording the album. Yeah. I mean, what a great place. You've probably seen videos, uh, clips of it. It was, uh, um, it was amazing. And, these songs came to life um, in the studio, and, and we recorded live. I wanted to make a live album, as we used to do in Purple and, and you know, back in the day, and rather than do, like, you know, Pro Tools, we'd get a drum track and then a bass track. And, yep. No, let's all play in the same room, the same time, together. So that's what we did. That's Glenn, that's a great point, because to me... It, it, it'll be an absolute sin to not hear these songs live at some point because they do have that vibe. Every you go yeah. from track to track and you and you just go, yeah, I yeah. could hear this one live. I could hear this one live. Um, look, a, a lot of people know your you, your street cred is unquestioned in the world of rock. <laughs> to give me give me the give me the Glenn Hughes scouting report on the other band members as well for people who might not be as familiar. I think most people know that Doug played. I've known Doug since uh, uh, Dio a, a long time now. Since my, my, you know, we were my friend Ronnie. Doug Aldridge. And um, so I've known Doug for 25 years, sort of like you know. And um, he played in my band in 2015, uh, which was fantastic. We we went around the world doing that. Um, and so we, I've always been very close to Doug. I, I met Dean when he was in Journey, I don't know, 15 years ago. I uh, had a, you know, lunch with him. 
had not met David Lowy until he was the one that asked me to join the band. We spoke about that before, sure. uh, about a year and a half ago. So, again, everyone's very graceful with what they do. Um, everybody's accomplished musician. David Lowy works his ass off. Uh, he really works his ass off. And, and um, we're again, we're such good friends. It's so... That's the key ingredient for me is, is making music with friends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and 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 making it making it with peace and love, which uh, I always peace and love. That that's always your thing, man. Uh, peace and love, and uh, there's there's a lot of love on this record. Um, it, how about uh, obviously you know the, the the tour dates that were scheduled have gotten pushed back at pushed this around. point. <laughs> so when, when everything's uh, you know good to go and safe, you'll be able to get out on the road. Then uh, you yeah yeah unfortunately do you, do you have dates in in 2021 at all? Or? You know, good good question, Don. I mean, you might know that we had a tour starting in February in in Europe that's been pushed back now. And um, I just got off the phone with Jimmy this morning about what's going to happen in May. We're supposed to be in Japan in May. Not sure if that's going to happen, mm. simply because of travel. Um, supposed to be shows in the summer in Europe. Not sure about that. Um, in reality, most of our friends, mine are your friends, um, and all your audiences, people they know in the rock music bit. They're all starting in 2022, aren't they? A lot of so them, yeah. It would, it would appear, Don, um, to make it easier for people, let's look at 2022, but we are penciling in shows, and, and this is a secret between you and I. Okay. There are shows, there are shows penciled in for the USA in September. Okay, we'll say, and we'll keep. We'll, we'll assume they're not happening, and but then we'll get very right. excited if they do happen, and we'll keep yeah. our fingers crossed. Because I think, you know, I think the last time you came on the show several months ago, uh, one of the things that I felt that you hinted at, and maybe I read this wrong, was the fact that you know one of the reasons you're interested in joining the Dead Daisies was that you wanted to tour actually more, whereas a yeah. lot of artists your age like mid fifties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they want to start slowing down, Thank but you. you gave me the impression that you want no. to keep going. I do. Um, yeah. As you know, the daisies, uh, travel everywhere and, and they travel very well. Entity. They, they do travel very well. Yeah. And so for me, knowing that I was going to bring my songs and they were, Everybody's digging what we were doing, and we're good friends, and we're hit with this pandemic, and uh, it's now we have to look on the bright side. It, it, you know, it's we're still upon us here, but we have to be very, very, uh, just keep plowing through this, man. We're going to get to the other side. We're starting the journey as we speak. For you, hey, Glenn, for you, again, now that you're in your mid-50s like me, what 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 when you know you're going to go out on the road for any period of time, whether it be in a, a month, two months, three months, whatever it is, what what what's your preparation like for that? What, you know, how long do you do you do something special leading up to that time? Exercise for me, both with my mind, yeah, and my body. Um, preparing to go on tour is uh, at any age, but especially when you're in your mid fifties. Yeah, you've got to be prepared. <laughs> you, know, you, know, I had, you know, I do a daily routine where I live on the beach here. I walk three or four miles, sometimes five miles a day, Ooh, sometimes too long. And it's just getting ready for the stage, you know. Um, other yeah. friends of mine that do the same thing in my age group. And um, that's how I prepare. As you sometimes... Oh, sometimes by the way, don't, I, I sing every day, whether I'm in the house or in the studio or, or you know, outside here. I sing... To anybody that will listen, <laughs> if, I, if I had to, if I had to guess, I, I would have I would have said that Glenn probably still sings every day, and um, because you have Can't a, help it. the good thing is if you go on these walks and you go a little too far, all you got to do is just start singing, and Gabby will find you eventually. <laughs> I mean, the the power in that voice is just yes. still beyond belief, my friend. Well, you know, there's nobody more grateful than I am about that. That's it's boggles my mind. 
Yeah. And, and, and so, so yeah, but you bring up a good point too about, you know, mentally too, before you go, go out on tour, you gotta, you gotta make sure the noggin is on straight as well as the body. Yeah. Um, super important, right? It's so important. Uh, and it, again, it's, uh, uh, you know, I have this thing about no fear. Um, I don't have any fear when I'm, yeah. doing my thing you know uh, at, you know at home and stuff i'm <laughs> probably fearful uh, but when i'm <laughs> out doing my business in, in the in 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 front of uh the great fan base uh i am very very at peace with myself uh knowing i'm doing the right thing and the appropriate thing yeah so so let so let's say we go ahead here people love the new dead daisies album which again is called holy ground it's out friday january 22nd um a fantastic record you guys go out you tour the world with it and cool. it's a big success and you get home and you get a phone call and it's the deep purple camp and they're saying uh, hey you know not for nothing, but, you know, maybe just for one time around the world, we get the Mach 2 and the Mach 3 singers together. So you have Ian Gillen, Glenn Hughes, and David Coverdale all out on the road. Do you consider it? I would not consider it. Wow, breaking news. Would not consider it. Is uh, w w do you want, Would you like to elaborate on that at all? Um, because I'm way past that now it's been such a long time ago let's just say that there are some unresolved problems from the past okay uh, not you know it, 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 you know me well enough to know what i'm talking about sure um and and for me the time i have left to do my work on this planet i need to keep making new music mm. and plow, plowing on forward uh, yes, I have done some shows, uh, you know, in respect to Deep Purple music, as you know. You've been to a couple of them. Sure. And, and, but as far as re-engaging with them chaps again in the live format, I can't see it happening. I love Dave. This is nothing to do with David Coverdale. Oh, sure. Um, I love him. I would work with David again if we get a chance, but anybody else, no, no. Yeah, and you can always <laughs> you get you can always get good intel from Doug Aldrich because he play he's played with both of you guys now. Yes. Um, in both bands, which is amazing. You know, he he's played with some of the best rock singers of all time. Yourself, David Coverdale, and yes. and Ronnie Dio. Who you know, I spoke to Doug, and that interview is going to air next week. I recorded it, but uh, I think we can all agree that um, probably the biggest rock snub. Of all of them, and there are many, but the biggest one of all of them is that Ronnie Dio is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is mind-boggling. Oh, it's, it's mental. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all I can to, uh, to change that. A few of us are, are talking to the good people over there. Yeah. Yeah, let's... And, I think, and, and by, the way, by the way, Don, I think, you know, touch wood, uh, I think that's going to happen. I really do. Yeah. My, my, my concern, my, my what, not, not, not word concern, my, my thing right now is I've just made this record with, with the fellows in the dead days. Is, and all I'm concerned about is getting to as many people globally as humanly possible. And even exclusive before you're done, because I've got some great new songs for another album. Well, that's. So, a, I was going to say that. I was going to go, you know, he's not out on the, 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 the Dead Daisies album's done. It's been done. He's been home, not touring. I, I guarantee you there is a Glenn Hughes solo album either well, almost completed or fully completed and waiting for the right time, which makes me, you know, well, so super happy. I was in, I've been in my studio upstairs from late April to late August working on another album and I would imagine in the next two or three months we're going to make another record so we're so excited about that you know just just you know because we were talking about Deep Purple um wh what part are you, is there any part era of your career or or maybe just an album that you feel has kind of been overlooked in your career oh yes and only because I was so very young as a teenager. Trapeze, Don, a little bit before your time. I know you're young, but this is really young. <laughs> yeah. um, 1970 to 73, that period for me uh, as a teenager at the time 
that band, we started out playing to five people a night. And we, when I finished with the band in woo, April of 73, we were headlining 15,000 people. And we built such a great foundational band base. And people are still getting turned on to trapeze. That was my biggest joy and love in my life. That band trapeze means so much to me and so much to the people that follow my music. Yeah, because I, I saw that you you tweeted out ran, just kind of randomly um, yes. the the trapeze. My first love. Yeah, the, yeah, your first love trapeze. Uh, the album. Um, you are the music. We're just the band. So of course I you know went back and had to listen to it because I wanted to hear the beginnings of the voice of rock and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, re real cool. You know, I mean, if people want to check that out, you you know, you'll definitely get a a lot of insight into, you know, where where Glenn started and and sort of how he's evolved over the years. But it's it's unmistakably you in that band, and there's some just some big riffy yeah. stuff and jammy stuff and and all groove. It's all got groove, you know. It's it's where I found myself musically in 1972. Yeah. Um, 20, 21 years old. And um, I found that where I was making that album was a great place for me at that time. Before the, uh, the drugs and the, and, and the booze, if you will, although I don't want to touch on that, but it was a, a, a major period for me as a songwriter yeah. to come from that era. And the Tony Iommi, the stuff you did with Tony Iommi, uh, I, I want to give a shout out to as well as uh, most especially the 1996 uh, DEP sessions, which that, that yeah. album is just that just will blow your head off. I mean, that that's an incredible record. I think we could all agree you and Tony uh, make yeah. a fantastic uh, <clears throat> cocktail of heavy music. Yeah, with Tony, it's, we've done we've done Seventh Star, we've done DEP, and we did the album called Fuse. And yep. to touch a little bit on Fuse, uh, John, you remember this? When Sanctuary bought Fuse out in 2006, was it? Well, that's when that Fuse came out. That's when Sharon put the band back together. And I think if I can say this, I'm going to say this very kindly. Okay. I think. Um, <laughs> My uh, Tony and my album called Fuse, and also Geezer's album was pretty much shelved hmm. because we all know that, in my opinion, Fuse was an amazing piece of work. Sure, and people ask me what happened to Fuse. Well, <laughs> maybe you should ask someone else. Oh, yeah, Tony and I love that album, we we talk about it, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's great stuff. So we'll uh, we'll we'll look forward to maybe a collaboration in the future. And uh, but again, you know, the Dead Daisies new album, Holy Ground. Um, you have uh, the, you know the musicianship obviously top notch. I know that you and uh, you and Dean are both sober musicians. Um, yeah. Is, are, do you do you guys do you bond over that kind of thing, or is it yes. just sort of an unspoken? Hey, I'm here for you. You're here for me, kind of thing. No, I, I, without, you know, without going a little private, but with Dean, um, Marco was a sober man, too. So yep. it, 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 Dean had Marco, and now with me coming in, um, it's, it's, my sobriety is number one for me. And Dean, it's not struggle, but he's, you know, had some ups and downs, but he needs a companion. Like, I need a companion. Sure. You know? So it's good when you've got, couple of sober guys working together because you can bond together and and be graceful and spiritual if you know what i'm talking about absolutely um so, uh so 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 i'd, I'd say besides besides the sobriety what what are the other what are the other th key things for glenn hughes that that you attribute to your your longevity and and your boundless creativity Laughter, laughter, and more laughter. Yeah. I got to be in a world of laughter. My, my missus is very funny. Yeah. I hang out <laughs> with very funny people when I can. Um, uh, the love factor for me is, is it's all about love and laughter for me. Yeah. If I'm not loving or laughing, I'm walking. So <laughs> uh, I'm very fortunate that I've chosen to, to have a, a loving relationship with everybody I'm friends with. So. 
But I've got to be able to laugh, Don. Yeah. Got to be able to laugh. I'm, I'm with you 100% on that one. Did, did, you, uh, did you make any New Year's resolutions? Are you a superstitious guy? I am a superstitious guy. Um, to not hold on to any resentment at all from the past which is major for yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. And I just think to, to work harder, to stay grounded, to, to be thankful every day, to be really thankful when my feet hit the ground, when I get out of bed every morning, to be thankful as I walk around my house and, and look outside going, oh my God, I live here. And um, in this body I live in, it's, it's calm. Now. But a pretty crazy, it looks like I'm pretty mental, but... Underneath the, uh, the perimeter of this shell is a very <laughs> calm human being. Yeah, no, you you, de so. you take your aggression out in your music, which uh, we appreciate, and uh, and th these those are great words to end on, especially in 2021, where there's such chaos uh, in this country and, and in all over the world. Those are those those are great words to live by. And everybody, let's get unified and rock. Pick up the brand new Dead Daisies record, Holy Ground, out January 22nd, featuring the voice of rock, Glenn Hughes, and I always yeah. love catching up with you and please stay you, don. please stay safe and healthy out there my friend yeah i need we, we need to have a visit soon don when, when we can get some time and we'll look to to i should come over your place and play your guitar with you oh i would i would be honored yeah and we have a mutual <laughs> friend jane back here on the east coast so if either yeah, either we we, love jane. we come out and visit you guys or you guys will come out and, and visit us but we i have a guest room you're always welcome man and I uh, love it you you've got a you've got a date there young man all right let's make it happen hey listen listen have your listeners and followers let me know what they're let you tell me what their favorite songs are on holy ground Okay. Nice to know that. I'm go I, right now. It's unspoken, but you know, with a with an album like this one, there's a lot of material yeah. to get through, and this is one of those albums that when I every time I listen to it, and I've only had it a week, yeah. I go, oh no, now this one's my favorite. So yeah, um, right. Don, the last the last track, far away, is a seven minute. That's the epic song I wrote at the last minute when, before we made the album. That for me is 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 got, got a lot of great storylines in that one. So that's a big one for me. I w I was just about to say my emerging favorite is the last song on the record. It is an absolute tidal Thank wave you. of music. Thank you. And and it was and and he just came up within the studio. That's what this guy. This is what this guy brings to your band. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I that, was song, into writing that song. What an what a, what an album ender! Oh my god! All right, everyone, get Thank the album. Know. It's called Holy Ground. It's amazing. Don't even hesitate. I'm going to pick it up on yeah. vinyl on Friday yeah. for sure and get that on yeah. my turntable. Hey, everybody! I'm, I'm mix and love you all wherever you're at. Looking at this, peace and love to you all wherever you may be. Peace and, and love, I'll G. See you as soon as I can. All love right. you, Don. Best to Gabby and the and the pooches. You bet. Love you, you brother. Bet. Love you. Be good. Love you too. Cool. Hey, man.